Greetings, my fellow freedom loving and sovereign thinkers. This is LL3's latest podcast. My name is Craig. I'm presiding along the beautiful swampy mangroves of South Florida. It looks like it cleared up just a little bit compared to yesterday. It was nice and cloudy, but today is a little bit better. And uh, today I'm going to be addressing, narrating an article written by Gary DeMar. It's under godfatherpolitics.com. It was posted last week, however, I just um, got a message from uh, Ben Swan's website pertaining to the same subject, and it's entitled, Former Supreme Court Justice Stevens Wants to Rewrite Second Amendment. And this is a little bit, um, I will say pretty insulting in good faith. However, I will narrate it to you guys. We'll post this on my... Um, Spreaker page as soon as possible and give you a little few additional goodies as well and that includes the whole Raymond Felton debacle which you know the ESPN's like and these other sports stations like manifesting over and so um okay well let's just begin and enjoy John Stevens served on the Supreme Court from 1975 to 2010 the longest tenure of all Supreme Court justices. Fortunately for freedom-loving Americans, he can't do any more damage. Of course, this hasn't stopped the present crop of justices from significantly remaking America into their own misguided image. His latest book, Six Amendments and Why Should We Change the Constitution, is an inside look into the mind of a Supreme Court justice, and it's not a pretty sight. Stevens has been described as a Midwest Republican conservative that became a hero of the political left. In his book, Stevens proposes that the Second Amendment can't be changed from this. A well-regulated militia is being, being necessary to secure of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. To this, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms when serving in the militia shall not be in French. Stevens shows by his call for addition of when serving in a militia. When that the original meeting referred to private citizens, people, not and not only people serving in the military. There is another point to be made how is when serving in the militia a fundamental right? Who controls the militia? As Stevens and other liberals understand the word, the state. The purpose of the Second Amendment is the security of a free state. If, it's, if the state controls access to weapons, then only the military, which is controlled by the state, is armed. That makes no sense. Stevens has been described as a brilliant jurist. There is nothing brilliant about his call for adding, quote, when serving in the militia, unquote, to the Second Amendment, unless you're part of the political left. It is is antithetical to what a Bill of Rights is all about. Governments don't need rights spelled out for them. Government operate on the basis of force. The constitutional framers hammered out a document that limited the powers of a federal government by enumerating them. The Bill of Rights was added at the insistence of the states in order to guarantee certain freedoms to the people, not the national government, the state. People who serve in the military already have the right to keep and bear arms. That's what a military does. By guaranteeing the right of the people to keep and bear arms, the national government and any foreign power are put on notice that either a coup d'etat or an invasion will be hard to win. Read the story about what happened when the Nazis invaded a British island. That's an interesting link. Okay. A final point needs to be made. Here is the bottom line rationale from Stevens. Emotional claim that the right to possess deadly weapons is so important that it it is protected by the federal constitution distort intelligent debate about wisdom of particular aspects of proposed legislation designed to minimize the slaughter caused by the prevalence of guns in private hands. 
Who's doing the slaughter? In the majority of cases, it's people breaking the law. Whether it is a gun, knife, baseball bat, or their own bare hands. The reality is that gun homicides are overwhelmingly tied to gang violence. In fact, a staggering 80% of gun homicides are gang related. Will this change if Stevens get his way? Yes, number of gang related shootings will go up. Yet most gun control legislation will do little to nothing to slow the growing gang problem. Most of the gun laws are aimed at segment of a population that is mostly law-abiding and outside of the gang culture and would likely to do little to stop any violence. Didn't Stevens learn anything about prohibition? When the consumption and manufacture of alcohol was made illegal, it did not stop people from consuming and manufacturing alcohol. The 18th Amendment created a new criminal class that had no regard for the law. <laughs> hey, I like that a lot. The gentleman did a great job. And I like what was on added here. Rights are not gifts from government. Precisely. And Mr. Gary DeMar did a great job on this article. And uh, what's really hilarious about Justice Paul Stevens, see, I don't really use that left-right paradigm, but prefer freedom to tyranny. And he's just a, I, I would say, a pacifistic tyrant. Because he had a long black robe and been in the Supreme Court for around 35 years. And we should just listen to him. Well, sorry about that, Stevens. Because the truth of the matter is, you haven't learned anything about victim disarmament. Or trying to make a right into a privilege. Alright? So, funny about this, I like to, got a couple of, um, the definition of what is militia. This is under Black Law Dictionary. Under It's called lawdictionary.org. And it reads, The body of soldiers in a state enrolled for discipline but not engaged in actual service except in, mer in emergencies as distinguished from regular troops or a standing army. Okay. And we got another one right here, which is, Title 10 U.S. Code Section 311 Militia Composition and Classes Subsection A The militia of the United States consists of all able-bodied males at least 17 years of age except as provided in Section 313 Title 32 under the age of 45 45 years of age who are or who made declaration of intention to become citizens of the United States and the female citizens of the United States who are members of the National Guard. Okay, well, that's a little bit skeptic there in good faith. But here we go to subsection B. The classes of the militia are the one, subsection 1, the organized militia which consists of the National Guard and the naval militia. And subsection 2, the unorganized militia which consists of members of militia who are not members of the National Guard or the Naval Militia. So, right there, a militia is anyone can be, you know, or stand by, be called out, and armed, ready to go. So, it's very interesting on that area. And um, Ben Swan did a great, great, Viewpoint two on it, and it is a hundred percent laughable. What Stevens is doing, and myself, is one hundred percent treasonous. I'm just wondering if he has a altar of Malte Sung and the Pasha brothers from the Ottoman Empire in his hidden bedroom with black and white candles all over it. So, um, that's on that area. I find that pretty um, disturbing. And it was interesting too because what got me learning about the Second Amendment related, the Raymond, Fel the Raymond Felton ordeal 
the Knicks point guard got arrested for having a quote unquote an illegal firearm. Ooh. And it's interesting when it's, I just like read about it through the daily news. I, I may just put that on my Facebook page, I mean, Spreaker page as well. Because he was holding a handgun, his, his wife was filed for a divorce, made a claim that he was holding a handgun during a Valentine's Day clash. 19 month marriage get, get crumbled. And um, her lawyer told the cops, uh, she told the cops going through divorce, she feared for her husband might harm himself. And uh, it was interesting here. Took the gun, which had been stashed under the bed of Felton's Upper West Side apartment to the 20th Precinct Station House. So, well, wow. Goody two shoes, I would say, allegedly. The Belgian-made semi-automatic handgun was loaded with 18 armor-piercing bullets, according to them. And, of course, we have here, below it, her wife is a Cornell grad and a law student at Fordham, interviewed by cops, and, of course, and of course Felton turned himself in. And it was interesting, there's a claim that she, he never actually threatened her. But she was concerned about his state of mind. Shame on her, according to this article. Of course, you know the he got he, he can face a maximum of two point three two point one third to seven years behind bars if convicted. So who is the injured party? I would like to ask that to the state of New York. Escape more serious. Escape more serious. Okay, you know, felt and escape more serious charges. All right, it's still under investigation, and I like what they have on here about the lethal weapon. Five facts about the powerful side five-seven pistol, manufactured in Belgium by the FN Harstor Company, known among drug dealers as a Mata Policia, a cop killer, capable of shooting body armor-piercing ammo with 20 clips, used by Major Nadi Hassin. In 2009, for a hood rampage, where he killed 13 and wounded 30, and it was funny about that. That Fort Hood area was considered unarmed, a, a firearm-free zone. So, but the Yahoos don't want you to know that. Used legally only by Secret Service, law enforcement, and military until federal assault ban was lapsed. Uh, so, all right. So, um. I know the Nick and the New York Knicks organization supporting them, which is good. But um, I find this pretty insulting, according to according to this, this article, because he there was no injured party, and this put put to be a, on a, a lawyer, going to be a lawyer. Well, according to this article, she may be pretty damn street stupid, but I can be mistaken. And, uh, and, of course, he had a restraining order on that. And it was funny because I went to the New York uh, State Constitution. And it's very, not really too impressed, especially with their Bill of Rights. So I'm, like, looking through here, and I don't really see anything fascinating, you know, about enumerated, enumerated rights, certain enumerated rights. But here's the thing I, here's the thing I can say. What they what they've done to Mr. Felton was uh, unconstitutional under I'll say Article Twelve of the State Constitution, and it says here Section One, which is a militia, the defense and protection of the state and of the United States is an obligation for all persons within the state. The legislator shall provide for discharge of this obligation for the maintenance and regulation of an organized militia. And this was so hilarious about the whole SAFE Act, which that um, numbnuts Andrew Cuomo signed into law. It violates Article 12 of their state constitution. What do you want to have? The militia, if you want to call out the citizens, if you go, if if the state's under martial law, you want to have them bring in little flare guns and BB guns. Give me a break. And in addition, about the laws, 
even some of these.